Hey guys, it's Jeff from Fresh Sherlock, and today we're gonna make something that doesn't require the Instant Pot at all. That's right, not everything needs to be made in the Instant Pot, but I promise you this thing is crazy easy to make, and probably one of the most incredible desserts you will ever have. Yes, that's right, we are going to make a dessert today, and banana lovers, beware, because I'm telling you right now, you're never gonna look at a banana the same way again. We are going to make, inspired by Magnolia Bakeries, fantastic banana pudding. This thing is gonna set it right over the edge, guys. It's taking it to the next level, and I'm telling you here and now, you bring this thing to a party, and everyone is going to be going bananas. <laughs> Pun intended. No cooking required. Let's go. So we're gonna start with one 14 ounce can of sweetened condensed milk, and I'll tell you, this stuff is basically like liquid caramel in a can, so if you wanna lick the lid, that's great, but just be careful you don't slice your tongue open. And let's pour it in our mixing bowl. And make sure you scrape the insides of the can out with a spoon to get every last drop in Now we're gonna take a cup and a half of a nice cold milk and pour it into our condensed milk in the mixing bowl. And now let's take a hand mixer and put it in the bowl and combine for about a minute. All right, next step. Now we wanna take one 3.4 ounce pack of Jell-O Vanilla Instant Pudding. Make sure that it says Instant Pudding. So let's take that Instant Pudding mix and add it to our bowl. And then combine and blend it for another two minutes with everything else. Okay, perfect. Now we wanna put a lid on top of this and we're gonna pop this in the refrigerator for a minimum of four hours, but it's best if you honestly leave it in there overnight. We need to make sure this really firms up. It can't be liquidy like this at all. So if you like it, then you better put a lid on it. And like I said, pop it in the fridge for a minimum of four hours, but I'm just gonna put it in there overnight. See you later. Okay, so it's the next morning now, and our pudding has been in the fridge overnight, and it's perfectly set. So just before we're about to take it out of there, we're going to make some whipped cream. Yes, we're gonna take three cups of heavy cream or heavy whipping cream and add it to a stand mixer if you have one. It's gonna be the best thing to do with this whip. Or you can use a hand mixer, but I feel like a stand mixer will be the easiest. So take three cups of heavy cream or heavy whipping cream and use your whisk attachment here and lower it into our mixing bowl and begin whipping and start it on a low speed because there's a lot of liquid in there and then work it up a little bit and we're gonna let this whip and let it go in there for about one to two minutes and then speed it up and then pick up some the speed. And do you see how this now has become like a whipped cream consistency? It's amazing how when you put like a whisk in there and it just beats really quickly that it literally turns the heavy cream into whipped cream. This is done, beautiful. And I mean, look at that, it's whipped cream. So uh, by the way, this only took about two minutes to do with the whisk attachment in the stand mixer on speed six and then working up to eight. Okay, now it's time to go back to the fridge and take our pudding mixture out of there. And it should look nice and firm now. And Yep, looking like a pudding, exactly how we want it, just like this. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold our now freshly whipped cream into our pudding mixture. So I'll take a spatula and just put it inside and then begin to fold and mix. And then just get that. So basically you want everything nice and mixed together and so there's really no traces of pudding left and it's nice and blended with the cream. So I'm gonna just repeat this and put all of our whipped cream inside of our pudding and fold it in everything up so we really have the consistency being more like a creamy one than more like a pudding one and you're gonna see it's gonna blend together beautifully and there's the last of our whipped cream and again just fold and stir everything in and it's going to be perfect so when it's all done and folded in and mixed together it's gonna have this beautiful silky creamy puddingy like whipped creamy like consistency it's absolutely phenomenal all right so let's set aside and do our next step so you want to now take about four to five ripe bananas that should look just like this for what it's worth i got them at the supermarket about three and a half days ago and they weren't quite there yet but now they're absolutely perfect and we're going to take them and we're going to peel them and we're gonna slice them up into pieces like this. And by the way, I use a whole bunch of bananas. I use six. I think that's perfect. We want about four cups worth. So now what I'm gonna do is I wanna wet these because the bananas are gonna to wanna to turn brown really quickly when exposed to air and water's gonna help. You could also put lemon juice, but I feel like that kind of alters the flavor a little bit. So I'm just gonna rinse these with some water, which I've just done. And now I'm just gonna set them aside for a second. And now comes our final yet key ingredient to making this the perfect banana pudding. And that's gonna be some Nilla wafers. Yes. These these guys make all the difference in the world, so I'm going to show you what we're going to do. 
You're gonna to wanna to now, for presentation, use a trifle bowl, if you have one. If not, you can use a big mixing bowl, and that's fine too, like, that would be okay. Actually, you need one a little bigger than that. But this is a three and a half, three or three and a half quart trifle bowl. You can also get one that's up to four to five quarts. Um, but this one's gonna be great, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna layer the wafers in, followed by the banana, and then followed by the pudding, and then do layers. So let's start with our vanilla wafers, and do the entire bottom in one layer. Okay, there we go. And we want the entire bottom coated, so it's okay if they overlap a little bit. Now let's put some bananas in there. And rest those on top of the wafers. Okay, and that's perfect. Now we're gonna layer in some of our amazing pudding mixture. Okay, and then put it right on top of our bananas and our wafers, and just get a nice layer going here. So the amount we wanna use is about, I guess, a third or so of the mixture, but just eyeball it and make sure we have enough to do about three rounds of this. Also, be careful of the sides when putting it in. You don't want to really scuff up the sides because that's gonna look really beautiful when it's all done and clear through the trifle bowl. So just try to make sure you don't really get the sides with banana, uh, like remnants, or any of the pudding itself. And I actually find that like a serving spoon is actually easier to use in a spatula for putting it inside the bowl and layering it. Okay, oh, so I got some on the side, so I'm gonna clean that up because I want it to look really, really pretty from the side view. If it happens, it's okay, just wipe it off. There we go. And perfect. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna repeat the layer with some more Nilla wafers and then banana and then more of the pudding. Okay, all right, and now let's put more of this amazing pudding and then just put it on top. Just keep repeating this process until it's all finished. And there we go. That's my fourth layer, by the way, in this three to three and a half quart trifle bowl. And I love this trifle dish, like I said, because it's portable, it comes with the lid, and it was really very, very inexpensive. It was like $15 or less on Amazon. I'll link it in there. And it doesn't have one of those stands, even though those are really pretty, but it's easier to pop into a fridge and to transport this way. Okay, so I'm gonna finish with one more layer of the pudding mixture, and if you have some left over, which you might, that's fine, save it for later. All right, let's get that final layer in there. Perfect. Now we're going to top it off with our remaining yellow wafers. We're going to use this entire bag full out of the way. And I'm actually going to want to give it a nice crumb topping, so I'm going to take the bag and I'm going to take like a mallet and just crush them inside the bag. And after we're done pounding them, we have a lovely mixture of some tiny crumbs, some larger chunks, and that's perfect because we're going to take these and we're going to top off our delicious, beautiful banana pudding with it. And there we go, perfect. And basically not a single Nilla wafer wasted. And I didn't even get to eat one as a little snacky snack because it really is just the right amount for that entire bag. And there were 80 of them in there, guys. Unbelievable. Okay, look at that, gorgeous, gorgeous, just gorgeous. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a lid on top. So make sure, of course, there's plenty of room so the lid doesn't gonna smush on top of everything. And then just put it on top. And then when I take it off, look up. Oh absolute perfection. We're gonna pop this in the fridge for a good four to eight hours so it just sits in there and the wafers are gonna become nice and sopped up with all the pudding. It's gonna be incredible. And look at how beautiful that's already looking from just the side. And into the fridge you go. And I'm gonna leave it in there for about four to 10 hours. Whatever you do, just don't leave it in there for any less than four hours. And time passes so quickly here. So let's open the fridge up, get our beautiful banana pudding out of there. Doesn't that look absolutely beautiful? And we're going to now serve it up. Now let's take our lid off and oh boy, look at how absolutely beautiful that looks. From the sides, it looks absolutely stunning. People are gonna look at this and they're literally gonna be looking like a puppy through the window waiting for an owner to come in and choose them. I mean, this looks absolutely gorgeous. All right guys, let's serve this up and let the results speak for itself. All right guys, what happened was let's serve it up first. A lovely Arlene. What's on the top? It's bananas, it's Nilla wafers, it's pudding, it's phenomenal is what it is. How is it? have a plate, Well, no, I have a plate. Absolutely outrageous. Oh, yeah? Oh, my God. I'm taking more pudding from myself. I'm thinking that I took a lot. No, that's the right amount. It is? That, you did it right. If you're not taking at least that amount, you're not doing it right. Okay. Jeffrey, hang on my way. Is that good? I don't know what to say. <laughs> it's really good. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Look at that. I am having the banana pudding. This is really, really fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is really, really fantastic. It feels like a banana cream pie. Like a banana. It's delicious. You like it? Oh, good. How is it, Mark? Is it good? Is it like magnolia level? Yeah. All right, good. 
the middle wafers are crunchy. On the t- I make the better. top layer crunchy. Yeah. The bottom ones get very. When crunchy. you go to Magnolia, you never get the crunchy. Right. There you go. Good. Very good. All right. All right. Let me try some of this banana pudding trifle. Wah 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 wah. Look at that. Get some bananas and some wafers in there. If I was a monkey right now, I'd be a thousand pounds. This is an amazing, amazing banana pudding. The offset of the bananas with the pudding and the vanilla wafers, they just come together like peace. Peace is in the world today. Mm. It's decadent, it's creamy, it's not healthy, it's amazing. Banana pillows melting in your mouth. And she's taking it to her sick daughter, Michelle. Now, if, if, that, if that's not an endorsement, I don't know what it is. This will make any sick person feel so much better. It's really loud out there. Guys, if you enjoy these videos, go to PressureLookCooking.com. You're going to see tons of recipes there that run the entire gamut from the healthy to the less healthy, from vegan to carnivore. You're going to have it all. Go to Facebook.com slash PressureLookCooking and like my Facebook page. You're going to get great notifications telling you when new recipes come out, when there's wonderful deals on prices for Instant Pot related items, tips, Facebook Live videos, demos, all that stuff. If you like me on Twitter, you'll see any new recipe that also drops at Pressure Luck is my handle there. Also find me on Instagram, Pinterest, YouTube, subscribe to me there. All that stuff, I have it. Guys, thank you so much again, and just have one bite of this stuff right here, and you're going to go bananas. Ooh, ooh, ah, ah! Mm.